Today, we'll go through the process to configure the PME PXM Profibus module to allow a Schneider Electric P58 3040 PLC to communicate with Profibus slave devices using the ProSoft Technology Configurator for Modicon Software and EcoStructure Control Expert version 14 or later. Let's begin. If you haven't installed ProSoft Configurator for Modicon, or PCM for short, do that first. You'll also need to download the PXM Type Library. These are both available on the Schneider Electric website. So we'll begin by registering the family for the PXM Type Library. We'll just open the Types Library Update tool, navigate to the PXM Type Library folder, Select the family DSC file, click open, and install. This contains all of the DFBs and DDTs that we'll need for our PXM module. These will be added to our control expert project when we import the mapping from the PCM software later on. So I'm in control expert and I have an existing project already open. Some of the DFBs we'll be using require dynamic arrays, and these are not enabled by default. So unless you've already enabled them, we'll open up the project settings, go down to variables, and check the box to allow dynamic arrays, and click OK. Back on the PLC bus window, we will need to instantiate the PXM device in our control expert program. Right click on the preferred slot position and select New Device. In the New Device window, expand the third party products and select PME PXM 0100 and click OK. And we can confirm that the new module has been added to the rack. At this point, we'll switch over to ProSoft Configurator for Modicon to continue the configuration process. Now before creating a PXM project, it's recommended that all the required GSD files be registered. So we'll do that first. This is something you'll only need to do once when you add a new device. Afterwards, it will be recognized by your system. So on the menu bar at the top, expand tools and select GSD file management. And this will open the GSD file manager. Here, GSD files can be added, viewed, and deleted. There are various ways of sorting the available files. Select the Add option under the GSD File tab at the top of the window. Browse to and select the required GSD file for your device and click Open. Now we can move on to creating our project. So under File, select New. Then add a PXM instance by expanding device in the menu bar and selecting Add. In the window that opens, select the PXM Profibus Master and click OK. This will bring us to the PXM Configuration window. We'll start in the General tab by configuring the instance name, the IP address, and the connection size. It's critical that all of these match what we configure in Control Expert a little later. The name we assign here will be used for the variables in the PLC program as well as for DHCP IP address assignment. So there are certain naming rules that apply. You can click this button to the right of the field and a little utility opens that will automatically generate the appropriate name based on your information. So just select whether you're using a standalone, local or remote rack, or if you're using a hot standby system. Select the slot number that matches the slot that your PXM occupies in your rack. For me, it's slot 3. It's important to have a proper name format. Now, before we finish here, we'll copy this name so that we can paste it into Control Expert. We'll enter the preferred IP address to assign to the PXM module. The I.O. connections default to 1024, which is a single connection. Anything higher will open up a second connection. Next is the Profibus tab where we configure the Profibus master settings. We'll modify the station address, the highest address that we want to scan to, as well as the baud rate to match the settings of the Profibus devices that we're connecting to. There's also a timing section that we'll come back to a little later in the configuration. 
There are other tabs with some security settings and some options that are specific to hot standby. There's nothing else that we need to get into. When you're done, click OK. And now that we've set up our PXM module, we can begin adding Profibus devices. To do this, right click on the Profibus devices tree item under the PXM module and select Add Profibus device. We'll use the GSD file selector to find and select the required GSD file for our device and click OK. And this brings up the device configuration window. In the general tab, enter an appropriate instance name. The name will be used in the generation of the device specific DDT. So be sure to use a name without spaces or illegal characters. On the Profibus configuration tab, We'll set the node address that the device is using, as well as the other Profibus parameters. The user parameters tab is used to modify any of the external users parameters. The content you see on this tab will be dependent on the selected GSD file. Next, we'll go to the slot configuration tab. Here we can configure the slots of the hardware we're connecting to. We'll click Add Module, and in the window that pops up, we can go down the list and select the input and output sizes of the device. For this demonstration, we'll select one byte in and one byte out, and click OK. The appropriate modules will automatically be added, and if you do want to enter your own name here, again, you'll be limited to 16 characters without spaces or illegal characters because it's used in the generation of the device-specific DDTs. So we'll click Apply and then OK. Now if we had additional different Profibus devices to add, we would go through the Add Device process again for each of them, configuring them as needed. However, for this demonstration, we have two more slaves that are just like this one that we want to add. To do that, we can simply copy this slave then right click and select Paste Special. In the window, we'll set the paste count to two and set the starting address location to node three. I'll also check the box to add a suffix with the station address onto the device name. The Use Default Config option will, if checked, create a new instance based on the GSD file defaults. Otherwise, it will just copy the settings from the configured instance. Click Paste and two additional devices with the same configuration as our first device will appear in our Explorer. This is an easy way to add many instances of the same sort of device to your project. So now that we have all our slave devices added, let's return to the master configuration Profibus tab where we entered the network settings. Here we'll click Recommend and PCM will run a calculation of our project and adjust the Profibus timing parameters to suit our settings. Note that anytime the baud rate is changed here, you'll need to click the Apply button before the timing can be recalculated. And that should do it. We can click OK. And now is a good time to save our project. And once the PXM and its Profibus slave devices have been configured, we can export the mapping configuration for import into Control Expert. So right click on the PXM module and select Export EcoStructure Control Expert Mapping. In the Export Options window, you have the choice of exporting as function block or structured text. We'll select function block and select where the destination mapping file will go. Make sure you remember that and click export. So now we can return to our control expert project to complete the configuration. Now that we have the module name and IP address established, we'll begin by instantiating the PXM device type manager or DTM. We'll go to the DTM browser, right click on the CPU and select add. From the list, select the PME PXM from EDS DTM. Under Device Properties, modify the DTM name of the module and we'll paste in the name that we generated in the PCM. We'll confirm that the DTM has been added in the DTM browser tree and we can now move on to configuring the PXM module. 
Start by setting the IP address. In the DTM browser, right-click on the CPU and select Device Menu, and then Configuration. In the tree view that opens, over on the left, expand Device List and select the PXM. Go to the Address Settings tab under IP Configuration, and the IP address that we enter here must match what we set in PCM. Under Address Server, we'll set DHCP for this device to Enabled. When you're done, click OK. Next, we'll move on to configure the PXM connection settings. Back in the DTM browser, right-click on the PXM module, select Device Menu, and then Configuration. And this is where we can add or remove I.O. connections. For each connection, the RPI as well as the input and output size can be configured. Keep in mind that your configuration here will need to match exactly the configuration that we entered into the PCM software. When you're done here, click OK. Now we'll bring in our mapping. In the Project Browser window, expand Program and we'll drill down through Tasks, Mast, to Logic. And here we'll right-click and select Import. We'll browse for and select the export file that we just created in PCM. And once the import has completed, we can see the new mapping section appears in the project browser. Note that a number of specific mapping DDTs and DFBs have also been created. At this point, we'll rebuild the project. And once that's done, we can connect to the processor, then transfer the project to the PLC. Now once the project is downloaded, the M580 will assign the specified IP address to the PXM, at which stage the BS LED will flash green on the module. Now we can return to the PCM software and our PXM project there. Now that the IP has been assigned, we can download this configuration to the PXM module. Right-click on the PXM module and select Download. The module will receive the configuration and once it's complete, the M580 software will go online with the PXM. This is indicated by the green PXM icon in the tree here. At this point, the status of the PXM can be viewed by selecting the status item below PXM in the project tree. And we're very close to being done with the configuration now. At this point, the PXM is showing that it's connected to the M580 controller, but that the Profibus DP stat is stop. This explains why the Profibus slave devices in the tree have red icons. We'll need to set the controller to run mode. So let's return to Control Expert, which should still be connected to the M580. Go up to PLC and set it to run mode. If we open up the derived variables and look in the data editor, we have names that are specific to our PXM, one for the master and one for each connected Profibus device. Select them and then create and initialize a new animation table. We'll enable a value modification by clicking on the modification button at the top of the window under the PXM master variable. Drill down through control to Profibus Run. And we'll set this to 1 and press Enter. This will place our PXM module into run mode. We'll also expand Device Enable, go down to the node addresses of My Slave Devices, and enable each of them as well. So now we can see that the slave device icons back in the PCM have changed to green indicating we are online and exchanging data. If we open up status information, there should be some indications that will allow us to verify that the PXM is actually running. We can see freshness is set to 1, data valid is set to 1, and so on. Also, if we open up the slave devices themselves here, note the data exchange active bit. This will tell you that not only is the Profibus running, but it is also mapped correctly inside the 580. Very important. This, as well as the input and output data of the configured Profibus slave devices, can also be monitored via the Profibus slave specific variable. If I enter a value under output data, 
I can go to the web interface for this slave device and see that it has indeed received that data. If we return to Configurator for Monocon, the PXM status form displays a number of communication and technical statistics. Under General Statistics, we can see how many packets are being exchanged, for instance. There's also a live list. If you were to plug in a new Profibus device to the network, it would appear here, and we can discover the new devices in the Discovered Nodes tab and add them online by just right-clicking on them and selecting Add Device. The Profibus slave device's status can also be monitored by right-clicking on the device and selecting the Status Menu item. This can be very handy if you're troubleshooting a device that is not appearing on the network. You can open this up and see if it's online, is it exchanging data, is it enabled in the PLC program, along with several other flags that alert you to specific problems. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope that you have found it helpful.